hello friends. So I was going to rebuild this uh, workflow uh, that I had posted in a promo, but um, as I was recording I thought maybe I could do better, so I decided to make a, a better animation for the fish and I found a, a better model for the fish. Uh, so long story long, I used uh, Vellum and a few IK tricks to build a more organic animation, it kind of just moves better. Then I added more corals in the back, so I think overall looks better. So I'm, I'm building this setup with all these uh, new passes for the first time. So things might not go as planned, uh, just heads up. All right, let's get started. So this is what I had before, and as you see, it's not very fish-like. The, the body is very stiff and it's not moving properly. So, uh, but, but you can see <clears throat> more realistic motion in the final animation because I'm very loose with my control net settings so AI has room to add motion to my passes. So this is the new pass I have now. Uh, as you see, uh, that's that's our new fish. And um, so I have the animation. This side hasn't changed, but the background, uh, I made more of it in the background and I move all these rocks in the back. And if you look at the depth map, uh, you see they're kind of just tucked in the background and they're far away from our subject. So it might be cool, it might be cool. Um, just excited to see uh, how it's gonna turn out. And uh, overall, I changed the camera a little bit. It's just more wide angle, so you see more of a scene. Um, so yeah, might be cool. All right, cool. So I'm gonna start from here. Uh, let's uh, load everything we have. All right, so. Beauty. And I have like 26 frames. Should be enough. So this is beauty. And this is everything. And depth map. So, I always want to see what I'm playing with, so let me just make a preview and we can uh, we can delete it uh, later on, but for now I want to see it, I want to see what I'm working with, so let's just check it out. Quick, our checkpoint. switch so I can always uh, switch between these two let's be organized let's switch to two for now or maybe one doesn't matter at this point because this one has a, has a VAE on its own so what I need for this we need a clip text. This is going to be our positive. Just make a copy of it. This is going to be our negative. This goes here. This goes here. Let me 
actually just reroute this for now so I wouldn't forget. And this one. And this just to make it easier. So, for example, like if I want to have another of this, you can just copy and control shift V and you have another one as opposed to like grabbing this and just all over the place. All right. Just make a. Just write this out, uh, like what I need from this scene, so I wouldn't forget. All right, so let me just let me just write this out. Um, just the overall kind of explanation of like what this scene is all about. Let me describe like what I need. I'm just gonna go with a like just a just a single like just a fish in coral reef. And uh, I'm gonna select this and control up key a couple of times so I can add uh, like emphasis to it. And basically I'm gonna go like with purple and green seaweed underwater. You kind of need this to trigger some of the like underwater elements because later on I'm going to use a Laura and some of these Lauras they need this like something like that to kind of just trigger their uh, uh, their strength. So I'm just going to put this here for now and uh, and um, metrics and this is the stuff like you can find. Uh, in the description of your checkpoint and you know uh, like what they recommend to use and this is the stuff I found from that website uh, like for example like we can we can check it out like like if I go here let's just pick one of these images like for example like this one uh, so this is what they recommend we can do like motion blur Okay. Yeah, we can add this, but pretty much it's just a simple description. You don't need to go like very fancy and uh, too much text and everything. But anyway, so I'm just going to add this here and then I'm um, going to use that negative. Just the way it is. It's just so we can have something here. But anyway, yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna need a couple of control nets. Um, I'm gonna use the advanced one, and I need another one. And again, control net model, and I need two of this. What I need basically before doing all that, uh, let's just check out, see what we have. I just uh, it. Let's just make sure like we have all the passes we need. Okay, the first thing I need, I need a realistic line art. And I'm gonna preview this. And I need this for our control net. Um, we need positive, we need negative. I'm gonna use the control net line art. There we go. This goes to our control net, and this is our image. Also, I'm gonna make 
make a reroute here. And this is our depth map. And I'm gonna use uh, this guy. So control net uh, depth ST 1.5. And uh, this is our control net model. And this goes here. This goes here. Okay, let's just be organized. I'm gonna lower everything because we're not gonna need much of this. Because I don't wanna don't wanna force anything on the AI model. don't need we don't need uh, we don't need that to be too strong and overwhelming so I want to give like room to AI to to interpolate everything uh, properly all right this is cool Okay, so we're gonna use this for now, and uh, we can make changes to it uh, if you need to later on. Uh, I'll show you how. But uh, most importantly, I'm gonna need a animate diff, and I'm gonna use the legacy one. And uh, this is the model I'm using, and uh, and this is this is what I'm using. I'm gonna add a link to all this stuff I'm using right now, so you can just follow along. And I uh, can add the model, and what I need is an animative context. This goes here. And uh, I need a context overlap of two. For this one, and after the model, we need a free U, which is gonna improve the the animation model. And uh, these are the numbers I found works the best. Nine and point four. All right, this should be good. Just select all of them. This is our animate diff. And we need a K sampler. And we need a K sampler. So model to model, positive to positive, negative to negative. And the latent image, we're going to use an empty one. And the size of my image is 1280 by 720. And the batch size is the number of the frames that you want to have. So I'm just going to convert the batch size to input. And then from our uh, uh, primitive node, by the way, we don't need this much. Maybe like we can just test it with 12 frames. and. Uh, I hate all these like tangled up nodes, but you know, at some point we just can't avoid it. So anyway, so this is our latent batch and I'm just gonna do a different color. And maybe this could be same color too. And this goes to our latent. And this is our final image. And uh, we just need a decode color this also something we can find and the VAE is this guy I'm just gonna make a copy of this just don't want to have like too many nodes and just paste it and uh, we can use this I can move this for some reason oh it's pinned
pins maybe. Yeah, there you go. We need oh, we need a, a video combine. Or FPS, and um, this is actually what I use, which is very handy. It's file name, uh, prefix uh, Mikey, which you can find here. F Mikey nodes, and uh, yeah, there's so many useful, you know. Uh, basically nodes and tools that you know you can explore the file name prefix and then I'm gonna connect this guy and uh, YouTube underwater that should be good and um, change this to this guy. Okay, so these are the basics that we, we've covered and um, this should be good. Uh, also, we need one more thing. We need the LoRa for the animate diff. Um, and this is what I need. Also, you can find all this in a description of the video, so don't worry. And this model now goes here. And I'm gonna turn this black. So I'm gonna find them. And this should be a one. Okay, so we already have a depth map, but uh, as an alternative, I also wanna generate depth map uh, from my beauty pass using a Zoe preprocessor and uh, compare the results. Okay great, so we should be ready for our first test. Uh, let's cue the prompt and check it out. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, we don't have the IP adapter yet. Uh, so at this point we are only relying on uh, the text prompt to des describe this scene for us. But, uh, but let's see. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, I mean, it's it's all right. Uh, it's not terrible. We have this like extra fish, but um, at least we, you know, the animation is stable, and um, we can definitely improve it. Um, so for now, I want to see. First of all, I, I want to bring this down to like something about like six point five or something. So this would be a good time to add uh, our good old uh, IP adapter setup. So I can use a reference image um, uh, to control the aesthetics of the animation. Uh, I'm gonna fast forward this section, there is nothing new to add, but you already know my setup. Uh, it's just the IP adapter you can find online, uh, uh, more information about it, or you're gonna have my workflow to follow along, but basically these are just a few nodes that would sit before my animate div, and uh, it helps to break down uh, a reference image into a few tokens and combine it with my text prompt, and uh, all together, you know, that this, this describes the, uh, more my, my scene more precisely. Okay, let's go with this. Okay, this is too much. I'm gonna do five and then add a little noise to it. And then I'm gonna limit this process. All right, let's go.
Okay, there you go. It's already much better. Uh, you see more contrast. Uh, the lighting is better. It's backlit. It's more cinematic. And uh, the only problem we have is that we have an extra fish for some reason. And uh, let's check it out. Yeah, as you can see, it's uh, coming from the line art. And that's the problem, you know, when you have a very rudimentary uh, representation of your scene, it becomes highly susceptible to mistakes. Uh, so it's important to have a, you know, more like precise, I guess, you know, wireframe as a, as a backup. But we're going to fix all this using masks. Uh, by the way, I want to quickly mention that uh, this is another test I did using a different image for IP adapter, but uh, even though I like it, uh, I like the lighting, everything, but it's just a little too bright. And uh, I want to go back to the other image we picked and we continue from that point on. All right, so the next step would be adding a LoRa and uh, this is a, a LoRa I tested. Also, I found another one online that I haven't tested before, so we can just give it a shot right here, but uh, you, you'll see how much uh, of a difference this is gonna make. Uh, I found the LoRa for the underwater corals and this is gonna add a, a huge amount of details to our scene. And uh, that one is actually called Underwater Coral version 2 and we only need maybe like 0.75 of this and uh, we're back the old image so everything's everything's kept the same so now let's give it a shot I wish we could have uh, compared it you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I'm gonna I'm gonna bypass this I'm gonna save it so we can compare so let's just do this one more time and then we go back and and enable the LoRa and then test and compare. There you go, we're back to the same image, but this time we, we have saved it. Uh, all right, so pause. Go back. Active. And uh, let's go. Yeah, there you go. It's a lot better, to be honest. And, you know, when you look at it side by side, you see how much of a detail you added uh, to the seabed and uh, the, the bottom of the ocean, all these little rocks and stuff like that. Everything's super organic and realistic. Uh, <clears throat> even the light on a, a surface of the water, you know, you can see um, it's just more realistic. And uh, you see like some god rays and stuff too. Um, all right. Um, but also all the artifacts that uh, you're looking at right now can be fixed by adding the second and the third iteration um, using the masks. Uh, uh, but overall, yeah, it looks much better. Uh, so for the next test, I'm going to lower the strength of, uh, of the LoRa uh, for the corals and uh, let's just do another round of tests. Okay, I tried that uh, 0.7. It didn't make a huge difference, to be honest, uh, but we're gonna go with this one and continue. Okay, so we're gonna use this mask. We're gonna convert image to mask and we're gonna use the, the blue channel. Also, if you need to, you can always like, for example, like blur the mask. Um, I'm not gonna use this because my mask is already uh, good enough. Uh, but if you need like a soft mask or you know more room around your uh, subject, you can you know blur the mask and use that that way. Anyway, so we're going to need all this. Uh, 
Also, we haven't tested the uh, uh, Zoe depth uh, anything. We just generated, uh, Here, but maybe we can test it we now. Shift, drag. And we also need the, the positive prompt. Control sh or no. Yeah. Let's do this. Control shift, control control C, control shift V. This is our new positive prompt. And uh, we're gonna use the old uh, negative prompt. That's not gonna change. And the conditioning for this um, would be let's do uh, coral reef. I don't know. <coughs> Just experiment. Yeah, this is gonna stay the same. Okay, the difference is that the difference is that we need to set latent noise mask. And the mask is this that we just created. And we're gonna use the the latent from our previous uh, iteration, and this is gonna be our new latent. And everything's everything else the same. And now we can preview this. All right, so before doing so, uh, let me just show you this lore I just found, uh, the one I was talking about. It's called Undersea Depths FC. And uh, if you look at the images, go through them, uh, you see tons of, tons of details, uh, and it looks very promising. So uh, I want to give it a shot here. Yeah, this one is very interesting. I uh, kind of like this one over the other one, but I think the only things missing uh, is those um, like highlights, and uh, that's why maybe uh, it's, it's better to combine both and not not pick one over the other. Yeah, one Laura has better lighting, and the other one has more details. Uh, so just by combining both, you know, we can maybe just get the best uh, of both worlds. But you have to consider the fact that IP adapter also affecting your image, so you have to find the right balance. All right, so I'm gonna combine these, and uh, let me just see if I can use a Laura stack. <coughs> I'm gonna use this one, RG3. And we're going to bring everything under one roof. Uh, so the first one would be our main V3, which is this one at the strength of one. The second one would be the the coral one, which is uh, 0.75. And I'm going to add a little bit of our uh, last one, which we just found. And we're going to add like 0.5 of this. And we uh, need the model, the clip, and this one also be bypassed. This one goes here, and this one goes here, here, and here. So we're gonna put this here. So hopefully it's gonna it's gonna work. Let's just not change anything else, and let's go with this one. Yeah, there's just so many things in the first image uh, produced by the first Laura uh, that uh, I don't want to lose, so it just uh, it might be a good good choice to combine both. All right, so this is the first one. 
And as you see, like I think we did what we intended to do, uh, which we mixed, uh, which we mixed uh, some of the like a cool elements from both uh, Loras, and we still have a good animation going. Uh, so I think it was a successful mission, and um, just uh, I just can't wait to see the the second one. Yeah, the second one, as you see, is a little faster because not doing it uh, over the entire image. Yeah, this is uh, this is super cool. Okay, let's continue with the uh, last iteration, which is going to be the fish. Uh, also, I want to experiment with another image uh, for IP adapter, and I'm going to lower the uh, the strain a little bit. Okay, um, yeah, this is this is good, but I just noticed that actually I'm using the same IP adapter for the second one too, which is not what I had planned. And uh, let me just remove this copy because we need a totally different image. Not too good. All right, I'm gonna put this here and. Um, yeah, the model is fine, but then this needs to go to a new animate diff. Also for avoiding all these like tangled up branches, let me just copy this and then copy paste here and then connect our model like this. I might, uh, yeah, blur the mask too. So it wouldn't be constricted to the just the shape of our uh, model, just something like new to play with. That should be cool. All right. I might, uh, yeah, blur the mask too, so it wouldn't be constricted to the just the shape of our. Uh, model just something like new to play with that should be cool all right this is connected to this we're using a mask for the fish we're using an ip adapter a new animate diff and then we have to change the sky and say something different maybe a, a Leica photo of a, let's do a clownfish see if it's gonna take it into account uh, all right cue prompt Um, as you see, uh, overall it's uh, improved uh, for sure, and uh, it resembles our uh, uh, reference image we provided for the IP adapter. Uh, the only problem is that it's not a very stable animation, the fins not attached to the body, and the eyes are just moving all over the place. The only reason I can think of is that our line art is very rudimentary, it's only covering the outline of our geometry. So we have to address that somehow. All right, let's go back to our wireframe shader. And as you see, it covers the entire geometry and all the nuances. Um, I think this is good to generate line art with. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna use this guy and uh, we're gonna create another line art. And this would be the, the image that we're going to use. I 
and this is hopefully gonna fix the um, animation problem. Alright, so let's test it out. Good. Also, if you have like two images and you know you don't want to go to like Nuke or After Effects to to combine them and do the whole like exporting thing, you can you can always like use it. For example, like either just composite, you know, composite um, image composite mask if you have a mask. But if you want to just blend two images, you can just use the image blend, and you can just, for example, like this would be the this beauty pass and the first one we can connect our fish pass and uh, we can maybe like do an overlay or something or just a normal yeah 50 percent <coughs> blend and then this would be our new image and we can create a line art from here that's one way to do it also one more thing i forgot to change our beta uh, schedule uh, to a square linear so I'm going to have to go back and change all of them. And that's going to significantly improve the animation quality. All right. This should be good. Okay, there you go. Uh, so everything's uh, everything's fixed, uh, and uh, honestly, it looks looks a lot uh, better than even what I uh, created before. Uh, I'm I'm super happy with it. The only problem is that our fish uh, has fucking four eyes. So there are like two ways we can fix it. Uh, either we can crank up the line art. Uh, uh, for the fish only, but uh, also what I had in mind is that I wanna I wanna also like implement that uh, into my first uh, iteration. So I'm gonna blend uh, my normal beauty pass and my fish, and uh, I'm gonna create a line art from that, and that would be my uh, that would be connected to my uh, control net. Uh, so I had a problem with Comfy UI. Uh, I had to restart. Now we're back. Uh, but what I did, um, I used the image blend to combine the, my normal beauty pass with the fish beauty pass because that one has a wireframe shader on it. And now I have a, a new image sequence. Uh, I can generate a, a, a better line art for my first iteration. And uh, that should fix the animation. That uh, should fix the problem we had uh, with the animation. So we just have to prompt one more time and go through this whole process one more time. All right. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay, there you go. This is uh, good to go, in my opinion. Um, we covered uh, a lot of things. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, also, also by the way, I changed the changed my uh, reference image and I changed the prompt to a, a regal blue f uh, fish. And uh, I think everything is uh, pretty stable uh, overall. Uh, you know, cool things happening. Uh, so what I'm gonna do. Uh, Uh, so what I'm gonna do just to finalize this, uh, I'm gonna use a VFI, which is a video uh, frame interpolation. Um, I'm gonna use uh, film uh, to uh, basically just do the, an another round of process to try to smooth out the animation. And um, also, uh, since I'm using a multiplier of two, basically it's gonna produce uh, twice as many frames. Uh, so if you wanna keep the same length or the speed of the animation, you have to multiply your uh, your FPS uh, by that number. So since I have, uh, I've been 
working with 24 FPS and I'm using a multiplier of 2. Uh, now if you want to have the same uh, length of the animation you have to produce 48 frames per second uh, just to keep the same speed but in this case uh, since I like to have it a little uh, slow motion anyway I'm gonna keep it the way it is. Uh, and I'm saving the image sequence as well. Uh, it's just easier, like for example, like for uprising, you know, things like that. For anything post related, it's just easier to uh, work with uh, image sequences. Uh, okay, uh, so speaking of uh, upscale, let me show you how you can do that too. Uh, it's pretty simple, but let's just go over it really quick. I'm gonna use a CR upscale. And uh, let me actually try this. I never use the um, anime sharp, but uh, so I'm gonna use this and uh, export it. Convert file name to prefix. Just call make a copy of that, and I'm um, just gonna. Add another folder, and I'm gonna call, uh, call it upscale. All right, it's finished. Uh, all right, can't wait to see it. All right, let's check it out. Wow, it's pretty cool. Yeah, seriously pretty cool. Super good. I mean, the fish is a little little fucked up, but can be fixed easy. But the rest is just flawless to be honest. Oh. Uh, this is crazy good. Wow, what is happening? I'm not sure if the anime is a right choice for this. Um, the only way we can compare and make sure is if we do another round. And uh, I'm just gonna use my one and only Ultra Sharp 4X and let's change the folder to upscale Ultra Sharp. Just name it properly. Don't get fancy. Yeah, this is already done. Uh, it took uh, almost like half the time as Anime Sharp. And um, but let's see which one we like more. So this is uh, ultra sharp, and this is anime sharp. Yeah, ultra sharp is, I think, is the is my choice in this case. Um, yeah, that one is like too noisy and too many, too many harsh edges. Uh, even though like some areas like pretty much the same. Okay, I guess uh, this section needs more time to really dig in and uh, understand what every model does and the uh, differences and uh, and, and uh, you know uh, uh, how they process the image. And uh, if you're interested in my workflow, please subscribe to my newsletter and I'll send it to you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.